contrary to a lot of the dark roles I play, I like to think I'm, I have a bit of a sense of humor and kind of fun. <laughs> um, so then doing this Hallmark movie recently was the first opportunity outside of some stage work that I'd done, Second City work. <coughs> I, when I started out as an actor in this business, I thought no one, in, no one would ever hire me to play a serious role because I considered myself to be such an ass. Um, you know, I was, I like to, you know, prank fall and do silly things and crazy characters and, you know, uh, but when I moved, uh, right after Second City, I literally, it was like dark and darker were the roles that I did. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, to a certain extent, Blake had a, a real darkness about him that uh, I think uh, Ron and Dan kind of fell in love with, that I was a, a, a bit of a, a physical clockwork orange where something that looked good on the outside was really quite fucked up on the inside. And uh, they kind of like that contrast, and we, we played with that contrast. And, um, you know, I, I think it was kind of cool that, uh, I mean, as I mentioned, this, this character was a, a two-episode contract for me. Uh, it was one of my first uh, TV film editions ever. And uh, we never in a million years expected it to be beyond uh, two episodes. But the contract came in. Uh, in correlation with the impression that I had made with the team actually auditioning for Randy's role. So, um, when it, I mean, I ended up going right through months and months and months of callbacks, and then finally uh, it went to Randy, and, and for good reason. I mean, he is that, he, he is Justin. Um, and he did such an incredible job. Uh, but they really liked what I had done, and they thought, God, we've got to use this guy somewhere. And, the British series version of my character was a terrible character. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was Russell Davies, who, uh, the British series creator, who had taken a look at a lot of what was shot um, with the pilot and said, you know, you don't want to kill off this character, Ted. You know, you don't want to, and you don't want to lose this character, Blake. I mean, there's something really interesting there and an opportunity for you guys to explore. Um, the, the drug theme in this community, and uh, they did, and so this this two episode contract became this really exciting journey. And uh, fortunately, I guess for for them also, I could I could go to that place for them when they needed me to to that darker place. Uh, Blake had a lot of awesome, awesome scenes uh, to tackle uh, as a character, and and in the world of film and television. Uh, you, as an actor, often have to employ a lot of unnatural tools in order for the work to translate naturally. It's uh, almost very counterintuitive. Uh, what you might do or what you might think you should do in a real-life moment doesn't necessarily translate well when you capture it within this intimacy. So when that in and of itself, just to do a, a, a sellable or an honest performance on camera, is, is, a, is a difficult task uh, for people to buy it. Uh, let alone when you have to represent uh, an affected state, which was a lot of what Blake had to do in that first season. And you know, you're living in that 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 terror and fear of going. You know, is it too little that people aren't going to buy it, or is it too much that people aren't going to buy it? Um, so it, it was it was scary for a while. I, it, honestly, some of my favorite moments um, in experience. Uh, on set ended up translating the worst for me. Scenes that I could, oh my god, if I could go back and do that differently, I would. 